Hi, I'm Doug Danielsos, a financial advisor at EBW. Like many of you, my wife and I are gathering our documents to prepare for our 2023 taxes. Oh, the joys of tax season. As we all go through this process, now is a good time to evaluate any modifications for tax year 2024. For individuals and families who are coping with increasing costs, reducing your tax liability is one way to free up cash flow. I'll be focusing on one tax strategy, a dependent care flexible spending account. Some of you are familiar with a flexible spending account for medical related expenses. A dependent care FSA is strictly for qualified child and dependent care expenses. Like a medical FSA, there is a use it or lose it policy. The other day I was in a meeting with a client who was looking for daycare for their first child. Having two young children of my own, I can remember the pains of trying to find an affordable option, but more importantly, a good fit. The cost of daycare in Northern Virginia is quite expensive. One way to help with this reality is using a dependent care FSA. How does a dependent care FSA help with taxes? Currently, the maximum contribution amount is $5,000 for both single and married filing jointly taxpayers. Unfortunately, the $5,000 amount is not adjusted for inflation on a year-to-year basis. If you live in Fairfax County, daycare costs could easily reduce this $5,000 balance in just a few months. Since contributions are made with pre-tax dollars, your taxable income is reduced. For example, if you are in the 24% federal tax bracket, you would reduce your taxes by $1,200 assuming the maximum $5,000 contribution. For some, that is an amount of two car payments. Nothing to sneeze at. What can you use a dependent care FSA for? Earlier, I mentioned daycare for young children. Other more common examples are before and after care, after school care, summer day camps, in-home nanny services, and even adult daycare. At one point, my wife and I were using a Taekwondo school for before care. We used the dependent care FSA to help pay for this expense. Some of you are familiar with SAC, Fairfax County's school age childcare. They provide before and after school care at Fairfax County Public Schools. A dependent care FSA can be used here to pay for those SAC expenses. What does not qualify as a qualified expense for dependent care FSA? The IRS has established rules to clarify what is considered a qualified expense. You can imagine some taxpayers have gotten creative with this in the past. Tutoring, summer school, music lessons, private school tuition are a few examples of ineligible expenses. How do you access a dependent care FSA? Your employer provides the ability for you to contribute to a dependent care FSA, just like a medical flexible spending account. Open enrollment season is when an employee would opt in unless a qualifying life event occurred, for example, birth of a child. When it comes to reducing your tax liability, you wanna be able to take advantage of as many options as possible. Considering a dependent care FSA is one way to do this. Knowing about the strategy is one thing, actually implementing is another. To find out more, you can consult myself and our team at EBW and your tax professional. You can find my contact information here. Please look forward to our upcoming videos about recent developments. Please subscribe to our channel for more content like this, this one.